Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about today on something a little bit different because today I'm reviewing the UK's best-selling power two-wheeler. It's been best-selling for something like six years continuously, maybe even slightly more. Outsells everything else by some margin. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Honda PCX125. A little scooter, an amazing little thing, completely uh, revamped for 2021 and I'm one of the first to ride it. So stick around, stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think of it. So scooters then, I completely get them and I completely understand why in some countries that have slightly warmer climates everybody has these because they're just such practical things in terms of urban transport. They're cheap to buy, cheap to run, lightweight, fun, plenty of storage, you don't have to dress up like a Power Ranger to ride them, nimble, parking's not an issue, very economical to run, got a lot going for them. And of all the scooters you can buy, this PCX125 is, as I say, by far the most popular. First came out, I think, in uh, something like 1990, I think. And since then they've sold something like, or was it 2011? <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. They've sold something like 36,000 units here in Britain, which is uh, by far and away more than any other powered two-wheeler. The PCX125 has had a revamp for 2021. Lots of new features on the bike, new engine with four valves, it's now got ABS and traction control, it's got things like uh, idling stop which it has had for a while but I just think that's a great feature in the urban environment. Lots to like about the bike but anyway let's review it as if I hadn't ridden it before because I've not ridden uh, the PCX125 prior to this, this is my first ride on one of these bikes. I'm glad to say this is my latest long term so there's going to be lots more coming up on the channel about the bike but this is my first impressions review so if you're interested in uh, a scooter such as the PCX125 and this is a video for you so you join me in the Ombrons well not in the Ombrons I'm actually in High Wycombe here a uh, local market town here in Buckinghamshire which is its uh, sort of intended environment in and amongst traffic so I thought it was well worth riding out here just to uh, do this first impressions review because this is exactly the sort of place this bike was designed for and during the review I'm going to be giving you little uh, bits of the spec as well so rather than do a separate walk around I shall do little inserts every now and then and talk you through bits of the spec as well a bit like this so let's have a little look at the PCX 125 shall we she looks absolutely splendid in this red let me show you uh, it comes in a couple of colors this is my favorite along with the uh, gray I think it also comes in a black and uh, potentially a white as well but I think this red looks absolutely great I love the way that they've done the design on this it's got this uh, big front end this blacked out screen this rather mean looking front I think which uh, is surprisingly though when you ride it you're actually quite a lot in the wind flow which is unusual there's not as much wind protection there as you'd think but I think overall the design of the bike is really really nice one of the things I love about scooters is of course the underseat storage so let me just show you that if I just bring the uh, bike alive by pressing this button here move this switch to seat press this button here I can release the seat and there we go there's a storage and I've put in there a helmet just to show you that you can in fact store a helmet underneath the seat. This is actually uh, Mrs. Fly's HJC Rafa 11, which is the uh, smallest helmet that I actually own. Uh, I couldn't fit any of my crash helmets in here. So if you've got any peaks or you've got a big head like me or uh, you've got cameras or anything like that on your helmet, you won't fit it under there. But if you've got a small head like Mrs. Fly, you can fit the helmet under there. Okay, so back to the riding then. Hello, who's hooting who? What is the first thing that struck me as I got on the bike and rode it for the first time? Well, it was the riding position, as it often is with, uh, with motorcycles. And on scooters, it's very, very comfortable. I thought I'd come up here actually, because it's quite a big hill, just to see if uh, the bike loses any puff. Up we go. Engine-wise, the bike puts out 12.3 brake horsepower and 8.7 8 foot-pounds of torque. The engine is slung really low, as of course it is a scooter. Here it is. It just sits here on the, what is effectively the rear swing arm. That means it has, gives it that excellent set, low centre of gravity, makes it dead easy to move around, uh, makes it feel very, very lightweight indeed. It's actually 130 kilograms ready to ride. Uh, so if you take all the fluids out, you're probably looking somewhere near 110, 115, but it feels very, very nice and light to uh, ride. So you'll have no problems even if you're a small wimp person. Yeah the riding position you're very much sat upright as you'd expect. My feet are in front of me like I'm sat on a chair and because of the fact that you've got these 
sort of running board arrangement you can put your feet out in front of you or you can uh, tuck them up underneath you as well if you want it a bit more sporty feeling so you've got a range of leg positions which makes for a very comfortable ride no issues coming up that hill by the way I was coming up there at uh, 40 miles an hour just over no problem at all I could have easily gone up there faster by the way but the limit going up the hill is 40 miles an hour so uh, yeah perfect real world speed riding seat on here nice and comfy big padded area seat height on here 764 millimeters so nice and low you'll have no problems at all even if you're short-legged and it's a lovely padded seat as well plenty of comfort there and good room for your passenger as well one of the things i also love about this machine is the fact that it has um keyless ignition which generally speaking i don't like but in this case it makes a lot of sense because the keyless ignition not only means that you don't have to faff about with the key to start the bike up but it also operates central locking on the seat so uh, if you're near the bike you can just open that if you come away from it it's locked and if you get the optional uh, top box it also centrally locks that as well so uh, nice touch there honda i think i imagine if you're a big person it might be a little bit of more troublesome i'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg Look, my feet flat on the deck here really easy for me to ride but if you were bigger if you were like a six and a half footer then you're going to feel a bit cramped on here i think normal size people no problem suspension on here pretty basic stuff but uh, feels fine nice smooth ride generally speaking and again you're not going to be hooning around like you're on a sports bike so perfectly adequate in that respect Brakes on here, nothing behind me. Let me just try the front. Yeah, it feels absolutely fine. And I'll try the rear as well. Actually, the rear feels very good. I suspect the brakes on here are linked. I don't know. The bike has got, as I say, ABS and traction control, which is quite something. And one of the features it's got that I really like, as I say, is that idling stop. If I just pull over here, look, into this little lay-by, and I stop the bike, I'm stopped now any moment now there we go the engine has now stopped uh, and we can see we've got a little flashing a in here to show that idling stop has been activated if I now want to pull away I'll just give the throttle a bit of a turn immediately starts the engine again we see the flashing stops and I'm good to go right I think I might need to turn around because I can only do a right turn there let's uh, test what it's like for u-turns Well, it's not feet up, but I have to say, turning circle is very tight indeed. The new engine on this I mentioned is of course 125, and it puts out something like 12 and a half brake horsepower, so it's not going to win any uh, races of course, but Honda do say it's been tuned for better acceleration and top end. And I have to say, it accelerates absolutely fine. With these scooters, with their sort of continuously variable clutch arrangement, it always kind of feels like the clutch is slipping, which of course it is, technically speaking. So you're never going to get ne neck snapping torque on a scooter of this type. But it's perfectly adequate. At the traffic lights, you're going to uh, out-accelerate most cars. One of the things I love on here is when you stop and indicate, or when you indicate rather, look at this massive uh, flashing right hand, because I've got the right hand indicator on the, the fact that I've got that showing on there. I love the display on here. Really bang up to date this. Got everything you need, proper fuel gauge look, trip counter, uh, various um, bits and pieces like your miles per gallon etc super frugal it's saying I'm doing 97.8 miles per gallon at the moment but you should get 130 miles per gallon out of this when you're cruising which is just incredible switch gear on the bike nice and simple as you'd expect it's proper switch gear on this as well tactile you can feel when you press it let me show you this side here look uh, we've got uh, a button here this enables and disables that idle stop start so you don't have to have it running if you don't want to or if you have the button pressed there then you can use that this of course the hazard lights and this is the starter over on the other side here everything you expect dipped and full beam on your lights horn and indicators everything you need nothing else besides and proper buttons you know when you've pressed them i like that about it yeah lovely little display that really modern looking i think handling in the corners is absolutely fine mirrors on here work really nicely they're quite big great view behind me no vibration in them in fact talking of vibration the bike is really smooth because of course it is a single cylinder bike sometimes single cylinder machines are pretty damn vibey not the case for the pcx 125 yes you know you're on a motorcycle but uh, no terrible vibrations at all 
fuel tank capacity on the bike, 8.1 litres, and Honda claim 134 miles per gallon at the bike as well, so super frugal to run this puppy. I know what you're thinking, I keep saying it's frugal, how much does one of these things cost? Well, according to the Honda website, £3,169 will get you one of these splendid motorcycles. Right, and now we're getting into all this traffic, which is a bit of a nuisance, but I suppose it gives me a chance to see what it's like to filter on the bike. Now the bike itself isn't giving out a very loud engine note or anything like that, so uh, cars can't necessarily hear you coming, so you've got to be super careful as you filter, in case somebody pulls out on you. And this is quite a narrow section of road actually, so not an awful lot of room here. The GoPro will probably make it look wider than it is, but it's quite a narrow bit of traffic I'm filtering between here. But the little bike does it with a plum. It is of course exactly what this bike is designed for. And yeah, nipping through the traffic, brilliant. Thank you, sir. Gave me a bit of extra space. Another thing I like about the uh, PCX 125, they thought about practicality. It's got a little glove box just here. Look, you press this, this flap comes down, and then inside there, I don't know if you can see, you've actually got a USB port as well. So uh, you can stick your phone in there and get it charged while you're riding along. This is what I love about motorcycles. Is unless you're in a sandwich situation, like between these two vans. You just don't get stuck in traffic. One of the many advantages. One of the things I noticed as I was uh, riding into town on some slightly faster roads on the bike was that actually the uh, wind protection on it isn't quite as good as I would have expected. It's got quite a big looking bulbous frontal area. I think it looks pretty cool actually. But the windscreen as you can see is set really low. And when you on, are on faster roads you are exposed to all the wind blast. Not a problem in town, of course. But if you are doing stretches on dual carriageway or whatever, then you do get quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of wind and weather shooting at you, which is unusual for a scooter. That's probably the only negative that I've found about the bike so far. Otherwise, it just feels beautiful. It's agile. It goes well. I love this uh, engine idling stop feature. It's really easy to ride. Obviously, just twist and go. It's got plenty of go. I love this display got a lot going for it this bike that couple with that price just a snifter over three grand just excellent value cheap to buy cheap to run super practical with the storage under the seat what I would describe as premium features as well with uh, stuff like the ABS and traction control the idling stop central locking it's nice display doesn't feel like it's built down to a price at all. Yeah, if you're in the market for a uh, scooter, look no further. The PCX 125 is for you, I tell you. Great little machine, love it. So, as I mentioned, I have got this bike now. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to ride it as much as I possibly can. Get to learn a little bit about the machine. And bring you some more videos. The bike is perfect. I'm sure I'll find some things I don't like about the bike. I'm going to try hard to anyway, and I shall bring you those in a future video, along with all the lessons I've learned about the bike. So stick around, stay tuned to the channel if you're in the market for a scooter. I'll be bringing you much more on this bike in due course. All right, that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already, and that way uh, I can see you on the next video. All right, until then. This has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio. All right, engine wise, then the bike puts out 12.7 bhp. Uh, engine wise, then the bike puts out 12.3 bhp and 8.7 foot pounds of torque. Uh, and of course, the engine being a scooter, slung nice and lowly, hit low rather. Here, let's do that all again. That's rubbish.